Welcome back to Number Math, in which we apply color to identify and sequence within math, always providing students the opportunity to solve independently and self-assess with an answer key at the end of the video. My Math 2 crew, this is your 542543 review. Kicking it off, triangle PQS is similar to triangle TRS. What is the length of side TS? Okay, we originally had PQS, this large triangle, okay? In came big slice and TR. Okay, what TR did is TR split side SQ into proportional sides of SR and RQ and did the same for SP with ST and TP. Okay, so we will just write those out. If we know that right here, SQ, all right, is split proportionally between SR and RQ, well, we can just write SR over RQ. And SR is represented by 4.2, okay? And RQ is represented by 10.8. Now, if you take a look at what I had set up for us, okay? Short leg from triangle 1 over short leg from triangle 2 equals long leg of triangle 1 over long leg of triangle 2. Okay, so what you also can do if you're just using black and white, boom. Okay, there's our triangle 1 and boom, there's our triangle 2. Okay, now, if we started from SR, we have to start from angle S again and go from ST, because if we put red in the numerator in our proportion, we have to do the exact same, or from triangle 1 onto the other proportion, okay? So ST over TP. Let's write it out. ST over TP. And ST is our X value. TP is our 18. From here, we all know what to do, okay? Setting up the proportion seems to be the difficult part. However, doing the computation, no problem. Exactly, we cross multiply. Thank you. Do not keep shouting aloud. Only reason is because you guys are going faster than I am. 10.8 times X equals 10.8 X we set that equal to, we will cross multiply 18 and 4.2. I'm not going to write 18 in parentheses, 4.2. Okay, so let's just do 18 times 4.2. We get 75.6. All right, now if we divide each side by 10.8, yes, great call, thank you. It is the coefficient of x. All right, we'll just divide by 10.8. And we get 7. All right, x equals 7. Now, I also wrote down scale factor, okay? Because these are broken proportionally. Let's just take a look at exactly how we wrote the proportion, okay? So in your calculator, if you did 4.2 divided by 10.8 times 18, you would get the exact same answer. So let's try it out. 4.2 divided by 10.8 equals 0 0.38 times our 18 equals 7. So you get the exact same answer. Um, I will go ahead and put it down for this first one. I'm not going to try to confuse you. But if you just follow it exactly as you wrote it, divided by 10.8, because they are proportional, which means they're all going to have the exact same scale factor. So if you just work with that, we can solve by scale factor. Okay, we take that, and that equals that random number, which was 0 0.388889. You don't even have to write it out. Okay, from there, equals, and we're just going to put blank. You're going to multiply that by 18. And you'll get your answer of 7. All right. Go ahead and pause the video for a minute. Take some notes. We're going to scroll through. Go ahead and pause this one. This one will be the one you solve independently. All right. And moving forward for the next one. Triangle PQS is similar to triangle TRS. What is the length of side PT? Proportions to solve. Okay. Here we go again. With our, yes, parallel lines, also known as our side splitter. And again, here comes big slice and TR for PQS, all right? Dicing it up to TRS is a smaller triangle inside of our larger triangle. But what TR does is that 21 over 12.6, all right, is proportional 
and this over x is proportional. So let's set that up, okay? Let's just do our 21 of SR, so SR 21, okay? Then we do RQ, we set that over RQ because this side of QS, it's set proportional, okay? So RQ, and RQ is represented by 12.6, all right? Now we have to, again, take from triangle one, let me actually do that, and triangle two. Now triangle one, from S to T, oh my goodness, it's not giving us anything. Whoa, what do we do? Well, we do know that in the entirety of SP is 40. So if we took our 40 and we subtracted X, that will give us our ST. So let me do ST over in our statement. All right, we will write it as 40 minus X. 40 minus X. We will set that over TP, which is just X. All right. And again, yes, we do cross multiply. And where should we start? Wonderful class. I always like to go with what we're multiplying two terms to. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. What I'm going to do is because we know we're multiplying that 12.6 to the 40 and the negative X, let's just go ahead and set this ooh in parentheses. So we know to distribute, okay? So first thing we'll do is 12.6 times 40. All right, let me get my calculator out here. Times 40 equals 504. All right, now 12.6 times negative x, will this be minus 12.6x? We will set that equal to, yes, class, wonderful job. 21 times x is... Thank you, 21x. And what should I do from here when we're just solving a simple two-step equation? Well, let's take a look. We have the variable alone on the right. So we need to get the constant alone to the left. So we do the inverse operation, the opposite of what this subtraction of 12.6x would be. Yes, it would be to add 12.6x, not just to one side, but thank you to both. Great job. All right, our 504, we just dropped straight down. We can cross those bad boys out now. Equals 21x plus 12.6x equals 33.6x. And yes, that's exactly what we do. We just divide each side by 33.6. All right, so let's do 50, oh, let me clear that. 504 divided by 33.6 equals... 15. So 15 equals X. All right. Now we know from T to P or PT, it's 15. If we needed to solve for ST, we would just do 40 minus X, just like we would said, we had said, and we would just do 40 minus 15 equals 25. And that's it. That's how you would solve for both. Now, technically, could you do scale factor again? Yes, you could, because we know if that when the side splitter of TR, the big slice, comes cruising through, all right? What we know previously is that we have 21 and 12.6, and we also have 40. So what you could technically do is you could take our 40 here, since we're solving for X. So you could do 40 divided by that entire side length of 33.6. Hit enter in your calculator. Again, look at the random digits, 1.1904761905. But if you just simply multiply that to 12.6, so if we just hit times 12.6, we should get 15. And what do we get? Yes, we do. We get 15. All right, so that one looks a little different because you need to take that entirety. All right, because we know when TR comes slicing through, if everything's going to be proportional because those are parallel lines, well, guess what? Originally, that whole side length would be proportional to this entire side length, which allows you to do 40 divided by 33.6 equals, I'm just going to throw in the question mark again. We know what it is, um, but it's just way too much to write out. So then we will just multiply that since we're solving for PT or TP directly across would be the 12.6 equals 15. So you could technically just do it like super fast and not even set up proportions, but you have to see it. 
All right, if you do decide to go that route, please don't be asking me because the proportions are what we all should be comfortable with and 100% confident leading into our quiz. Let's go. All right, go ahead and pause the video. Go ahead and write this one out for yourself, okay? Feel free. Thank you. I'm going to keep moving forward. And let's try this one all on our own. We are setting up some Pythagorean theorem here. Okay, C is always across from the squared angle, which is the hypotenuse, always. Okay, so it doesn't matter which side you mark as A or B. And if we just take a look here, we have our 90 degree square or right angle. All right, and directly across from that is our hypotenuse, which is always represented by C. Okay, I know my N and my U look very similar. Okay, but if we know, let's take a look. Well, we can do, oh, okay, C equals, but we know what it is. Oh, A equals, but we know what it is. So let's go with B equals. And let's just go ahead and write it out. Now, for this quiz, we're not asking you to factor anything through. So what you can simply do is just plug it and chug it in your calculator as is. All right, so let's just wrap that up. Let's just put in that 850. All right, I'll close it, square it, subtract from our A value, which is 475, and we will also square that. All right, so in your calculator right now, if you hit the blue second button, all right, and then you hit X squared, boom, we have our root. Okay, now we can simply just open a parenthesis, Type in 850, close that parenthesis, hit X squared, hit minus for subtract, open a new parenthesis, hit in 475, close that parenthesis, hit X squared, hit enter, and we will get 704.89. And since we are rounding to the 10th, all right, our 10th is the first decimal after that. So I'm just going to write it down real quick, just so you guys are comfortable with this. Some of us were slightly confused with the 10th and what was used to round it. Now, there are more numbers, but you only have to write the first two after the decimal to figure out that round of the 10th, okay? Now, this 8 right here is in the 10th column. This 9 determines whether that 8 is going to round up to 9 or stay the same at 8. And if that 9 is 5 or greater, it will change that 8 into a 9. So our answer is 704.9. If it asks for the 10th, if not, just go ahead and put 705 as that would round up the feet. All right, go ahead. I'm going to get my calculator out of the way. You know what? And let me just read this through. Now, I know everything was already there for us, but the distance from the outdoor basketball court to the volleyball gym is 850 feet. All right, basketball to volleyball, B to V. And from the outdoor basketball court to the football field is 475 feet. So B to F, basketball to football. What is the distance for a student to walk from the volleyball court to the football field? And here we go. Volleyball court, football field. All right. Sorry about that little quick. All right. Go ahead and pause the video. Feel free to plug that in on a piece of paper for yourself. All right. Ooh, there you go. That way you still have the formula for the B up there because that looks like what we are solving for. And moving forward to our next one. And again, this is another one in which you can use scale factor for. I'll go over it yeah, briefly. I don't think we should though, but it's the same formula on repeat. All right, short leg red or triangle one over short leg green from triangle two equals long leg green. Long leg red from triangle one over long leg green of triangle two. All right, so let's just go ahead real quick, and we're just going to take a look at our short leg in red, or from triangle one, this will be our triangle two, okay, because we once had PQR. All right, now what we have is we have the altitude of QS, so they call this the altitude to hypotenuse. We have our right angle, all right, cutting through into PR, which is our S, all right, so we can also do this a couple of ways, but we'll just solve it right here using our proportion. So let's take our short leg from triangle one. Will it be the 16 that's shared or will it be the four? Yes, exactly, it will be the four. 
All right, we could put that as RS or SR. All right, we will put that over our short leg in green, which is shared with our long leg in red. We'll call that QS. So it's SR over QS. All right, and QS is, yes, wonderful, 16. Now, if we go for our long leg in red, it's the QS again because it's shared. It shares the altitude. All right, so let's just do QS, and you see that QS and QS, wonderful, 16. And then we will put this over our PS or SP. All right, let's just go SP. And SP is represented with 3X plus 7. Now, there's also another way, and I'm just going to put this down here for us. I think I'd do it later. A squared equals side times side. Now, the reason I put that A there is because this QS of 16, all right, that's our altitude. So if we take that, which we will use an X to represent it by, so we could do technically X squared equals side times side, 4 times 3X plus 7. And then solve from there, but strictly for this one, because we're not solving for X and we know what X already typically is, let's just go ahead and work through the proportions. All right, so what is our next step in the process? Yes, and where do I like to begin? Yes, exactly with that variable, okay? So let's work through this. Let's put 3X plus 7 in parentheses. Why? Exactly, two terms. 4 times 3X gives us... 12x, 4 times 7, yes, or is plus 28, sorry about that, I'm trying to set my equals too quick, equals, yes, thank you so much, let me hear that answer one time, all right, let me double check because I'm unsure too, 256, thank you. All right, now if we have the constant alone, we need to get the exactly variable by itself, the term with the variable, which is 12x. So let's get rid of that plus 28. And how do we do it? Exactly, we subtract 28 from one side or thank you from both. So bring down our 12x equals 228. Divide each side by 12. 228 divided by 12 equals 19 x equals 19 all right so what we can do from here then is well we can do 3 times 19 because it's 3x plus 7 and that 3x when we read it yes class thank you it's just equal to 3 times x well 3 times 19 plus 7 well 3 times 19 is 57 add the 7 we get 64. So just in case it asks you for that side length of PS, well, it's 64. Now, technically, you also could have done 16 divided by 4 is 4 times 16 is 64. Oh, my goodness. What's our answer? All right. And then if you wanted to solve for X, you could do 64 equals 3X plus 7 and set it up as an equation that way as well. Um, that's just kind of how I see it. But some agree, some disagree, but that's exactly going to give you the correct answer every time. You can also use the altitude, which we will see just a hair later. Go ahead and pause the video. All right, try this one on your own. I will continue to move forward now. All right, let's try this one together again. What do we have here? What do we notice? We have a side splitter. There's big slice and TR again. All right, let's just go ahead. SR over RQ. So we'll do SR, which is our X over RQ, which is 19.2. All right. Equals, well, if we started with SR, we have to go ST, which is 15. So ST, 15, set that over TP, 24. Yes, I know it was just Halloween, but no, we are not TP in houses. All right, please, again, cross multiply. You guys are the absolute best. 24 times X gives us, thank you, 24X. We set that equal to what we do in blue of 19.2 times 15. Let's go ahead and try that in our calculator. 19.2 times 15 equals 288. 
Oh my goodness, just a one-stepper. All right, exactly. We divide each side by 24. X equals, so we'll take that 288, divide it by 24. We get 12. X equals 12. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You guys are the absolute best. All right. Yeah, you could have used scale factor again. All right. We could have done 19.2. All right. Divided by 24 times 15 gives us our answer. All right. So let's just go ahead and try that out of 19. Sorry, that nine's not the best. I just want to make it a little more quality for you. 0.2 divided by 24 equals, and let's just see if it gives us some random decimal point again, 19.2 divided by 24 equals, oh, okay, 0 0.8, so not bad this time. We can actually write that in. We'll multiply that by our 15. And if you just hit times, since we already have 0 0.8, 15, what does it equal? 12. What is our answer? 12. Thank you. Let's go. Feel free to pause the video. Try this one independently on your own. All right, find the value of x. Here we go. Um, this one, a little different, guys. Okay. We are solving this time exactly for the sides parallel, okay, with the arrows. And just to provide a great visual for you, what we're going to do is we're going to take our original big triangle here of SPR. All right, so I'm just going to take SPR. All right, I know it's not as, as big as the other one, but take a look, SPR. Sorry, that S just didn't look too great. Neither does that P. What's going on in my writing right now? All right, we'll do our smaller one in red. All right, so just a little smaller. Okay, and we'll just go TPQ. All right, now well, let's just fill in what it's giving us. Well, from S to R, we have 28. Let's go ahead and just fill that in. All right. And then from P to R, well, we have to do 16 plus 4 to get the P to R, so that's a 20. All right, and then in red over here, it's looking for P to Q. Well, P to Q we know is 16. So let's go ahead and put that in. But we don't know what TQ is. That's our X. All right. Now, if we know that, oh, SR is our longer side. All right. And we have a 20 and a 16. Well, 20 is greater than 16. All right, beautiful. So that's our larger triangle, just kind of telling us that. All right, let's just go ahead and set up our proportions. We can do triangle one. We can do triangle two. Now, necessarily, does it have to go as red over green equals red over green? No, it can go green over red equals green over red. It can go long leg over long leg equals short leg over short leg. It really just depends on what's best for you. But as we go through these motions the first time, let's just keep it simple and roll one time. All right. So let's just say we take PQ, all right? We will take our PQ statement here, sorry about that, which is represented by 16, all right? We'll set that over PR of 20. Then we will take what we haven't used in red, which is our TQ of X. And then we'll set that up what we haven't used in green, which is our SR of 28. And again, from here, it's just a simple cross multiply. 20 times X, guys. Thank you, 20X. I thought I heard the answer again, but I'm not 100% sure. So let me do 16 times 28 equals 448. So when we cross multiply 16 times 28, we get 448. Ooh. That's my highlighter. Sorry about that. From here, we just divide each side by 20. X equals, and if we do 448 divided by 20, we get 
wonderful. And again, you could have done scale factor. You could have done, well, 28. And again, taking the long, divided by the long. All right, we could have done 28 divided by 20 times 16. So if we take that in our calculator, we do 28 because we're taking all of SR and we're dividing it by 20. We're taking all of PR. Hit enter, we get 1.4. And if we multiply that to our 16 and hit times 16, what do we get? 22.4. All right, so go ahead, pause the video. Actually, I'll write that out for you. All right, so 28 divided by 20. What did that equal? That was actually a simple one too, 1 1.4. Wasn't crazy. Then we just multiplied that to 16, and that equals our 22.4, which is also our x. All right, scanning through, try this next one independently. Feel free to pause the video. Thank you. All right, moving forward. Now, this is the one that I have to give Miss O some mad props on. All right, I did set it up for us. A squared equals S times S. And if you've worked with Miss O and have been in her classroom before, we did use that when we were identifying similarity, all right, because we didn't want to be in ASS and we didn't want to be in ASS backwards. However, when we're finding that X, we can simply use this one. Ooh. All right, so moving forward, let's just go ahead and plug in our proportions. Short leg of triangle one. Well, our short leg of triangle one is a seven. All right, we'll call that RQ. All right, and what do we need to set that over? Our short leg in green, all right, which is our altitude, or altitude of QS, sorry about that. And QS is represented by an X, wonderful. Now, if we do our long leg, which is the altitude in triangle one of QS, all right, we will do an X. So now, instead of the A squared for our altitude there, We'll just replace that with an x squared. And this is where I really like the side times side because we have 19 times 7 left. Let me write that a little larger. You know what? That whole thing I didn't really like because this is so beautiful when you're solving for altitude here. All right. We'll go through that as I go through this one, okay? Sound good? Thank you. Wonderful. You guys are the greatest. All right. Look, back to our proportions. I know our statement here. All right, QP is 19. All right, so if we take a look, when we cross multiply, we know that we do X times X. All right, well, X times X is equal to, thank you, X squared. Do we see our X squared? All right, equals, whoa, if we cross multiply, it's 19 times 7. So X squared equals 19 times 7. And 19 times 7 gives us a buck 33. Ooh, again, I did that with the highlighter. Sorry about that. Equals 133. Now, if we know that x, now x squared equals 19 times 7. All right, well, let's just do x squared equals 133. All right, in order to get x by itself... All right, we have to take the square root here. We have to take the root out, all right? So what we do to one side, we add the radical, we do to the other, all right? So now with that x squared, we get that x by itself. And in your calculator, if you hit the second button in blue, and then you hit x squared, it'll give us that radical there. Type in the 133, hit enter, 11.53. Let's just call it 11.5, all right, if we're rounding to the 10th. And let's do the same here. And again, we just get that 11.5. So it's another short route instead of having to go through all the proportions and the cross multiplying. All right, we just take that altitude, which is x, all right, and we square it. So x squared equals side times side, 19 times 7, exactly what it's giving us. All right, and that's all you really have to do for that one. Go ahead and pause the video. All right, and again, you have it set up both ways. And moving towards our last one, we need to find X. We also need to use 
the Pythagorean theorem to find a couple of things too. So for this one, since I use the colors for the Pythagorean theorem to identify, we'll just do red over red equals blue over blue. All right, or hypotenuse over hypotenuse equals B over B. All right, so let's just go ahead and set that up. We'll do 55 over the corresponding side, all right, which is 165. And then again, if we call this triangle one, so let's just name this one triangle one, this one triangle two. All right, what have we not used here? Well, it wants us to use the X for our B side. All right, and then we'll set that over 78. It doesn't look good either. So I'm trying to write too fast as I talk. All right, our 78. From here, we just simply cross multiply. All right. 165 times x, what does it give us? Exactly, 165x. We'll set that equal to 55 times 78, which equals 4290. 4290, let me write that down. Wonderful. And then again, we just divide each side by 165. All right, so I'll take that. We'll divide it by 165. We get 26, so x equals 26. So now we know what this x is here. All right, we know that this is now 26. Now it also wants us to find side QP and side TS. All right, so let's just start with QP over here. And if we're solving for A, we're just going to plug and chug into the formula. All right, we can do that for both. So let's just do A equals. All right, do our little root here. And then again, I'll do A equals. All right. So our first thing in parentheses from this one will be 165 Close it, square it, subtract, open our B of 78. Close it, square it, calculate it. All right, so again, hit that blue second button, then hit X squared. From here, you will just open a parenthesis, type in 165, close that parenthesis, hit X squared, hit minus or subtract there, open a new parenthesis, type in your 78. Close that, square it, hit enter. We get 145.39. Let's just go ahead and call it 145.4. All right, so 145.4. And now we just need to do that one more time. So let's go ahead and plug in our C value of 55. Square it. Subtract from our B value, which we found of 26. Close it, square it, and again, pull in our calculator. Hit second, that blue button. Hit X squared down the same column. Open a parenthesis above 8, throw in the double nickel Lance Brig. Close that parenthesis above 9. Hit subtract. Open another parenthesis, type in the 26. Close that parenthesis. Let me go back because, yes, I did forget to square it. And, yes, I now have to square it here as well. All right. So it should look like an open parenthesis, 55. Close it, square it, minus, open 26. Close it, square it, hit enter. We get 48.46. We'll go ahead and call it 48.5. All right. Now, that completes your review. Take a look right here, pause the video, and you can try this one on your own. And in about five, four, three, two, one, I will scroll through. And for your answer key, taking a look at the first one you would have solved, feel free to pause the video to check your work. X equals the sweet, yes, 16. Scrolling through, that was one we did together. This is the one you would have worked on. Go ahead and pause the video. X equals 18. All 
all right? This is the one we did together. You would have tried this one independently. Go ahead and pause the video. All right, B equals 2,224.9. Wonderful. That one we did together. Feel free here to go ahead and pause the video. All right, for side PS, you would have X equals 8.8. .8. You would have plugged in your 8.8. .8. 5 times 8.8 .8 plus 6 would have given you 50. Um, I did forget to add the scale factor since it does want the side. You also could have done 20 divided by 8 times 20 would give you the 50. So in your calculator, let's just see if I did this one real quick for you. 20 divided by 8 equals should be, well, I guess I would know it the other way, but 2.5. All right, it is. Times 20 equals 50. So it would have given you the side length, and then you could have set it equal to 5x plus 6 if you had to solve for x and then just solve it as another equation. All right, this one we did together. Go ahead and pause the video. Check your work here on this next one. Looks like we should have had x equals 9. Moving forward... This one we did together. Go ahead and pause the video. Take a look at your work. Should have been x equals 22.5. And again, multiple ways to solve using that scale factor. Moving forward. This one we did together. This one you tried on your own. All right, we did run into, yes, the perfect square of 64. All right, so x equals... Eight. Wonderful. And if you take a look, love using the a squared equals s times s. A standing for altitude or just x squared equals 16 times 4. I couldn't get that in lowercase for some reason, so I just left it capitalized. All right, moving forward. This one we tried together. This one you tried on your own. Go ahead and pause the video. All right, first we solve for x. x equals 115. All right, for PR here, my old boy, Patty Roach. All right, then you just go ahead and plug in C equals, since you're solving for C, you would take your A squared plus B squared. All right, so 225 squared plus 115 squared. We take the root of that, we get 252.7. We do the same here for TU. All right. You plug in C equals your 90 squared, your A, plus your B of 46 squared. We take the root of that. We get 101.1, .1, the old Q101. All right, that completes your review video. Awesome.